The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're under a little pressure today due to all the news that's going on. I posted the German DAX, as you can see. It's been in a downtrend. We've got some ABCD structures down here, but they're going through those like they didn't even exist. These were about an hour ago, and, of course, with the news coming out of the Chinese uh, coming back and retaliating, that pushed the markets down even more. The Dow went from down... 300 to down 500 very, very quickly. The S&V down 25 to down 60. So uh, we got some big things happening, which is good. We like this volatility. And as we said from the very beginning, a long, long time ago, volatility is where you want to be because we're going to see some really wild stuff. Let's take a look here. Uh, the next one is the FTSE. Uh, and by the way, these prices are a little late, folks. They've already broken through these key levels. So that was done about an hour ago. There's nothing else I can do to, to do that. Now, what I was doing last night, I was watching, you know, some of the news that was going on. And I will, I will share with you, uh, we had a big gap down in the S&P. And then we had a rally in the S&P. And it rallied right up to the, uh, that 382 level, which was around uh, 28, uh, 60, 68, I believe. And then we went sideways for a little bit. And I'll just share with you some research that I do and might make it a little interesting from the usual stuff that we post here uh, in the den. But we'll take a quick look at it this morning. Here's my AI, my uh, artificial intelligence program. This is what we're looking for to happen. Uh, you know, through the rest of the uh, rest of the morning and then early this morning. And then what it's done, I will just give you what the forecast is for today. Remember, this is just a, it's a sophisticated wild guess, as they say in the trade, but it's scientific in a way. But kind of look at the time around 1130 to 12 o'clock. If there's going to be a, tr a change in trend, that's going to be it. Now, the one that came Friday was spot on at 11 o'clock, and it rallied 60 handles in the S&P. Whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know, but we've got something very important that we talked about in the newsletter and also last week. We got this from our good friend, uh, Rich Anderson, and we'll put this up and take a look at it. I'll be happy to look at cocoa and sugar in just a minute, Ruby, but we need to get this stock stuff because we've already filled the first gap there at 28.36. The next gap comes in at 27.84. It's not very far away. We could do that today. You know, if the Dow's down seven, eight hundred points, and at this level, it could really be, uh, you know, really be easy to do that. So let's take a, let's keep an eye on that because it's going to have some real wild stuff going on in these markets, and that's what we really. Uh, which we really like to look at. Now, all the many of the commodities are really getting hammered. Soybeans were holding up a little bit, and then they just gave away when the Chinese thing came out. They dropped another 10 cents. Uh, they're all breaking down, and the problem for that is is that they're they're in a free fall, and that this is not uh, good for the farmers. These there's uh, I spoke to Cy Monley yesterday on Mother's Day, and uh, there's some uh, land prices are holding up relatively well in parts of the area. But the problem is a lot of these a lot of these uh, farmers that did not hedge, uh, their bank loans are in big trouble now, and that's the problem. You're going to have uh, the the, uh, the defaults on the bank loans is getting higher and higher. And that's uh, something that is, uh, you know, relatively uh, difficult to look at. So well, anyway, let's just keep in mind that's what we're watching. Now, here is one that I think is really important this week, folks. This is the CRB index. This is I'm going to get this up here. Now, remember, all these patterns, they have a tendency to fail. So just remember that we had a big gap down in the weekly chart. So we're going lower today. We're probably going to get down to this 380 level, as you can see. That would be the continuation of the ABCD. That would be the three drive to a bottom pattern. Uh, remember, we made a low last year in May. And where we are now? Why, by golly, boys and girls, as Mr. Rogers would say, in the neighborhood of May. So let's keep in mind. Remember, we have a full moon coming in here. Um, 
here on uh, on Friday, and we have Norm Winsky on the 17th. But tomorrow, folks, don't miss tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to have Dr. Al Larson from Money Tide in Thornton, Colorado, is going to be our guest. And Al is one of the smartest boys I know. I mean, he's at the head of the class. Let me tell you, he has a double PhD. And uh, he's, he's a really smart cowboy. He and I are the same age. We've been friends for many, many years. And uh, he's going to talk to us about moon tides and stuff like that. All right, we're going to take a quick look here uh, at the sugar for, uh, yeah, he's got the book, Your Electric Life. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. And uh, we'll watch that uh, also. But let's take a quick look here uh, at the sugar. I haven't updated it yet this morning, but we are we we went down, you know, we had that big break in sugar uh, on Friday. We went right down to that 1.618 level at around 1160. I don't know where sugar's trading at now, but that is really important support. If we go below 1160 in that May sugar, that is not going to be a very good sign. That's a uh, that's what I would be watching anyway. So keep an eye on that. That's uh, and we're we're into May now, so we probably should move over to October sugar, uh, to to look at it. But that's what it looks like. Uh, the cocoa looks a lot better because it's uh, had a really nice move, and I think we could we uh, we're we're trading around. I did check cocoa this morning. It's at 1181. Yeah, it's holding up, Ruby. So it's it's okay. And uh, the the cocoa is holding up too. It's trading around 23.14. So both of those are holding up, uh, you know, relatively well. So I think that that seems okay. But boy, they're just tearing soybeans up. I mean, they really are. I was watching. Uh, I was keeping an eye on these uh, these beans because I we we're completing a major major A B C D pattern here. Uh, in the November beans, and we're we're down there now. We're, we're in fact we're a little bit below there, and uh, the number I was looking at in July beans was 801, and we're trading at 794. So that's uh, another one. Yeah, the cocoa's acting okay. Yeah, and 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 the sugar's acting okay too. Coffee's even acting okay. The main ones are the grains because this is where the the Chinese are coming in, and they're playing big games here, folks. You know, this is. This is getting to be like what they did with the Russian grain robbery back in 1972, but that's neither here nor there. We'll just watch that, you know, one one day at a time. So that's the main thing. Uh, I do want to. Uh, I don't want to start the next segment until we come to uh, to, to after the break, because I want to spend a little bit of time with the Treasury bonds and also the uh, the uh, the U.S. dollar, because the, I think the U.S. dollar has made a major top in here. We're starting to see signs of it in the euro, which we, we mentioned several times before, that we had a really strong uh, prob probability of that uh, bottom being made in the euro. We'll post that up here a little bit. Uh, we're already we're getting really close to this. So we're trading at a little above uh, 112 uh, 65 right now, I guess, in the uh, euro. So it's acting relatively good. What's interesting is, is we had a big, uh, big move here in gold this morning. We've had about a $14 move in gold very, very fast. So uh, uh, certainly not acting like what silver is going on, but you'll tell more about it. Um, the, the Russian grain robbery, that was 1972. They were playing all kinds of uh, games about, uh, you know, the, this was, remember, we, we, were, we were getting, Russia was getting ready to break away well, it took quite a few years, it took about 15 years to do it, but they were breaking away from capitalist socialism. And uh, what, what happened was they needed, they needed grain, and so they were playing all kinds of uh, games, and uh, we made them a really great deal on some stuff, and it put our grain markets into stratosphere for f five years. Made this cowboy a couple of bucks. Eight, seven, seven, nine. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, folks, we're back, and I wanted to take a minute to um, talk to you about the gold market because we've had a nice rally here in gold of about, uh, what is it, about 20 bucks? No, not quite. Uh, $17, which is a pretty good rally in gold. Uh, this is where we're standing here this morning in the gold. Let's get this up here so you folks can take a look at it. This is something that we uh, had uh, scheduled for the uh, newsletter uh, for the commodity part on uh, Sunday and you'll notice that we were looking for this rally to happen and it certainly has and now we're looking for a potential for a move down. Uh, I don't believe we're going to get above $1,300 on this move but we're very close. We're at 1298 right now. So it's going to be interesting to see if it's going to do that. If we get above 1310 this would be a uh, potential really strong bottom in the uh, the gold market. Uh, and the fact that we made that 50% retracement of that whole move from way back at 1167, uh, all it's been able to do is make a 50% retracement. I mean, gold has gotten tremendous strength compared to what's happened to silver. Remember, in the silver, we've been waiting for silver to get down to that uh, 12, uh, excuse me, four, <laughs> uh, 14 dollars and uh, 40 cent level, but we have not been able to uh, reach that as yet. I thought we were going to get there this morning. We got down to uh, 1463 uh, and then uh, returned and re rallied 15, 16 cents since that time. Not much, but we did take out, uh, you know, the 78 percent level, but it still looks like. Uh, it, it has a chance to make that 1440. So keep an eye on the gold. If we get above 1310 in the gold, I think you'll probably have a, a major bottom and maybe some type of a, you know economic uh, surprise here. And with these tariffs going on, you know anything will happen. Uh, what it, there's going to be a lot of political ramifications that I don't even want to think about because I can't even stand to watch that stuff on TV. So I don't. That's the probably the main thing that I'm trying to stay away from. Let's take a quick look here at this U.S. dollar, folks. This is the one that I think is uh, uh, very, very important on a longer-term basis because this is follow the money. Let's get this up here so we can look at it. This is the weekly. If you remember last week, I played little games with you. I said, do the homework. See the importance of these numbers that we're looking at. This is the weekly. Uh, notice that 61% retracement that you have there. That's uh, If you'll notice... Uh, Closely look at it from uh, 
the time period from June through where we are right now, June of last year. It's a beautiful three drive pattern. It goes up to the exact 61% retracement and hits it two weeks in a row. That was at that 98.10 level. We're now 97 and change below it. And uh, I think we're heading down. And this means the euro is probably going to go up. Uh, at least that's what it looks like. Uh, but folks, let, let's take a look here and just go back into time. Go back to 2009, 2010, 2011. You see that big triangle there? That's an ABCD pattern. And if you'll remember, this was uh, in May of 2011. There was a gentleman over there in Clearwater, Florida, in, in the suite number 618. And uh, he said that there was a thing called King Dollar. His name was Tom O'Brien. And he coined it t King Dollar, and King Dollar it was. It went from 73 all the way up to 103. That's 30 handles, folks. That's 30,000 large. So that was a big move. And you'll notice at that high up there, it made a really nice three drive pattern and uh, a really nice butterfly pattern and we came down and now we're at the 61 percent retracement we are at the proverbial moment of truth i don't know what's going to happen to the u.s dollar from here but uh if uh it gets above 98 this is all wrong but if it stays above uh you know if it gets below this level of 96 this could have a really big move and the euro could really scream why i have no idea about the fundamentals about that so that's uh, neither here nor there. So we'll see what's going on, going on to uh, what's going to happen here. But we'll keep a, keep an keep an eye on this. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk just a, just a tiny bit uh, about uh, you know we're we're getting hit pretty badly on a lot of these things, and it's not a surprise, folks. Remember, we were watching this major major pattern in the S and P and the the Nasdaq and all these others were were showing the. Uh, the big thing uh, here where you can see the uh, that three drive pattern that we had, we had the big, big move down. Yesterday or Friday, we rallied 60 handles. That's nothing more than a short covering rally. You get those all the time. You get one of those today. You don't know. But those are those are just shorter term moves. But those bigger patterns, we had divergence in the NASDAQ. We had divergence in the Dow Jones Industrials. A big divergence in the New York Stock Exchange, which is the biggest of all. That was the easiest one to probably pick out because if you if you looked at this New York Stock Exchange index really closely here, you'll notice that uh, the low that we made on Friday was a 61% retracement of the low we made back in March. Now, if we go below that, you see the rally that happened. You had a big outside day up, and now you're going to reverse it on a big gap down. That, that's not good. That's not good action. Look how many times the, since February that it hit the 78% level, folks. Um, you know, they don't always work, but, you know, when they do work, they work pretty good. So we'll see. Yeah, the market hasn't opened yet. We got another six minutes. I don't even know where the S&P is trading. Oh, here it is. It's trading at 28.29 last. The old lows, of course, was at 28.26. Uh, That's the low from Friday. Uh, and, uh, you know, th this is emotional stuff, folks. You've got to... If you've, if you've never traded without stops, you better start using them now because we're in an area where volatility is going to, uh, you know, really, really pick up. Just look what's happened to volatility here on Friday. And uh, you'll see that uh, on Thursday, we made a big 50% retracement. That was one of our largest moves in a year uh, up at that 24 level. Then what do we do? We dropped all the way down to 16. And what is that? That's nothing more than a 61% retracement. And now the VIX is going to be screaming again. So the, the important thing is look at the three drive to a bottom pattern that we had down there at 11 and change that we talked about. That's a double bottom uh, really nice three drive. We go sideways for a while till we get up to around 14, and then we start to accelerate. But volatility is here to stay, and I think you're going to see some pretty wild things. I think you'll see volatility way above 60 or 70, you know, long before uh, we finish uh, this move in the stock market. But I don't know where it's going to go. But no, nothing else is <laughs> nothing else surprises me either. So pay close attention to it. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's move on to uh, a couple of things that uh, I wanted to mention. I mean, uh, we, we talked a little bit about Rich Anderson, you know, last week when we had Rich on the show, 
and uh, they sent me something from the Weather Channel uh, that they watch for grains and stuff, and I'll just post this so you folks can take a look at it, but we have a really, really wet situation all across Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota. Uh, they're not being able to get coin in, but folks, it doesn't make any difference because the reason is uh, if the prices are going down, uh, they're there for a reason. People are scared, and that's what you're seeing in the volatility index, and you're starting to see things. Remember, we, cra we, crawl we, <laughs> we crawled up a wall of worry, right, on the way up. Now what are we looking at? We're looking at a slope of hope. So they're looking at possibly maybe get this Chinese things out of the way. If they do this, uh, there'll be a very quick rally if, it, if they decide, but we'll be able to see. All right, let's take a look at some of these others after the break. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, folks, let's take a uh, quick look here uh, at the gold market because I think it's important that uh, we, we realize that when they go to certain levels here that the market has a tendency to move very, very quickly. That's what we're, we're seeing in the gold market uh, right now, and I wanted to post this so that we'd be able to, uh, to see where we are, but <laughs> I can't believe I lost it. I just posted it, and I don't know where it disappeared to. Uh, gosh, hold on just a minute here. Uh, is this it? No, 
That's not it. Well, this is where I posted it the first time, but I had I wanted to post that what I posted for the uh, uh, for the when the price went above 1293, and here it is. Let's get it right up here and take a look at it. This was right out of the newsletter. Also, I posted both of them in here, and we're getting up here now to this 1300 level. Uh, I don't think we're going to get above 1310 today. I'm not sure, but we'll keep an eye on it. Silver's still lagging quite a bit, so is platinum, but we'll see. I wanted to bring something to your attention that we talked about a few times over the past few months, and that was the things from uh, uh, Rich. Are you there? Doing, Larry. Was, hey, Rich, thanks for calling in, buddy. I really appreciate it. Hey, we got the world falling apart. Anything you want to talk to us about that we should pay attention to? Well, I, I guess the, the the key thing I would tell you today is I, I would go with Will Rogers' trading strategy. You know, you only buy things that are going up. If they're not going up, you don't buy. You know, if they're going down. <laughs> uh, but but uh, to, to add a little levity, but. Uh, basically, you've got you you got two major powers. They both have to save face. Uh, I mean, the Trump thought the Chinese were coming and they had a deal and they've been negotiating forever. And then on a Friday afternoon, they got a wire and basically all the negotiations had been struck out of the agreement. And so then he waited until Sunday night of last week, you know, to send out the tweet. Then they were in town. They basically accomplished nothing. It's going to take some time. It, you know, this isn't. These aren't speedboats. These are big old aircraft carriers. You know, they, it takes a long time to turn a, a giant ship around. And, and China and the U.S. are giant ships. And I, I think uh, they'll eventually come to some kind of an agreement. But I suspect it, it probably at this point will take until the end of June, early July. I mean, it's. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it's going to take take a while. I think the Chinese misjudged. Uh, from what I hear, they misjudged the uh, the U.S. They thought when when uh, Pence and Trump were talking about cutting interest rates, you know, that that was a sign of weakness. So they figured that well, we've got the upper hand, and and we'll just go back and everything we've negotiated on at this point and start over. But they 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 misjudged the situation, and now they've got to reevaluate. They got to come together, but it's going to take some time, and. Mm -hmm. You know, 50% corrections in the stock market, let's just talk to S&P as an example, are, are very much the norm, right? And 50% yeah. correction off of uh, the December lows, that, that's not an unusual correction at all. And yeah. so why, why couldn't we retrace back at least that amount um, and shoot? I'm, I'm just calculating it out quickly here, but... That, that puts you down to 2700 and a 618 correction puts you down to that 2630. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see any reason it's not going to go there. And if we close under Friday's lows, you know, I think the odds are incredibly high. I can't, you know, I just couldn't believe that people were willing to give money away on Friday, rallying this market up. I thought opportunity is knocking, uh, mm -hmm. you know. It, it was it was giving, you know, take my money, please. That's yeah. what they were doing. I, I did not understand that. But in the meantime, all the agricultural markets are going to suffer. Copper is going to suffer. If, you, if, I was, if I was looking for one or two markets to give me tells of, of where there's value and where maybe we're coming together, let's keep our eye on Dr. Uh, Copper. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Copper's down again today, and, you know, it has a Ph.D. in uh, economics. I would uh, kind of keep my eye on that. Now, the previous roll on copper back in January was uh, 256.10, and we're at 272.20 right now. So uh, there's room for that to come down some more. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that uh, double bottom. I, I mean, that, as it takes time, these marks are going to shake out, and they're going to give us some sure. tremendous opportunities. It just... Yeah. doesn't look to me like it's today. Rich, I posted a chart of the Christmas corn, December corn, and it's uh, in the sewer. It uh, hit, a, hit a pretty good low on Friday at the 61% level, rallied a few pennies, and now they're hammering it again. It's trading at around uh, 364. 
Uh, it's beyond the 1.618 expansions on the long-term weeklies. Is there anything down by the cost of production on uh, December corn? I mean, no, the wetness that we talked about <laughs> over the weekend, you know, is uh, still very, very prevalent, but no one cares about that. It just keeps dropping, which is because uh, farmers are in big trouble. You know. they'll, they'll care, Larry, they'll care, uh, just between you and me, don't tell anybody, but they'll care about that tomorrow. In 1993, yeah. if you look at the amount of corn that was planted at this date, mm -hmm. uh, and that was a um, year where we had a, a drought and the yields came way down, and that number comes out, you know, the planning progress comes out tonight, that, that's going to be a big thing. Now, the, the key thing is if, you, if I haven't put any fertilizer and stuff on my ground, all of a sudden prevent plants going to be a better option than planting anything in and getting these kind of prices. Now, I expect, by the way, that the farmers will get bailed out because they're being punished the most by the, the, the money that we take in on the tariffs will be turned into the farm program and will support the grain prices. But that's, that's months away, too. You know, these are just things that I expect to happen in the future. They're, they're, you know, uh, if I was going to do something today, I'd be looking at buying a few uh, corn calls because the planning progress tonight, I think, will be dramatically below 1993, and I think that will be the focus tomorrow. You, you have to, when you're looking at fundamentals, you have to look at, well, when are they going to focus on this? Well, they're not focusing on, right now, they're focusing on the disappointment over the weekend and nothing got done. Tomorrow morning and tonight, they'll be focusing on, geez, we got, I mean, we don't have anything going in South Dakota yet. Our wheels haven't been turned. It's too wet. And, you know, 1993, just take, take a look at the chart in 1993 and, and see see what happens. So eventually the lights turn on, but it it takes a while, and the lights haven't turned on yet. That's for sure. Rich, uh, what, are you, what are you feeling about the, the crude oil market? What's going on there? Is anything that looks interesting to you? Well, uh, I mean, there were there were two tankers, Saudi tankers, that were attacked in the Straits of Hormuz, and and that's what's caused this rally today. So, I mean, anytime some guys want to do a little fighting by attacking tankers, which are hard, you know, are very, basically defenseless and very easy to attack, and, and now they need to be defended. Then it's a different story. But you know, the first time they get away with it, so that's what's causing this rally today. It, it, I would point to one thing. In Germany today, they opened up the electric highway where if you're a truck that isn't electric, you get taxed. Wow. Hey, the Rich, thanks for changing. joining us. All right, corn options. At least you got limited risk. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you soon. Rich Anderson, right, Anderson sorry, Capital bye. Management. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The fund Funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I've posted the chart of Lyft. That's at uh, one of those Uber-type companies that uh, started way back in late March. It went from uh, 88, and we're almost in half now, at uh, 48, down 40 bucks. The thing I wanted to bring to your attention here, folks, is that you notice the ABCD pattern that we talked about several times. We finally got there last week. We went right down. Uh, to that 1.618 level at 52. We had a little bit of a rally up to 57. And if you'll notice that little thunderbolt that we were looking for to possibly set up a potential buying pattern, that, of course, didn't happen. And you'll notice now that it's making a 1.27 expansion of the range from all the way through uh, late April to early May. And that comes in right around 48, if it's going to hold that level or not. Uh, I would not... You know, if you want to, of course, if you buy it, here's here's what my whole premise is here, folks. The importance here is that little red thing. Look at the far left where it says March, April, the end of March, early April. The 1.618 expansion came in at $52. Once we hit 52, it went down to 50 and, and a half. Then we rallied. Once we went back below that 52 again, that's what your risk parameter is, folks, because once it gets beyond 1.618, I don't know where it's going to go, and very few other people do either. So all I have to do is to go and look to see what the next potential pattern is, and we have an ABCD pattern here in Lyft at uh, uh, you know 48 and change. Now, whether that's going to hold or not, I don't know, but look at look at the distance between May the 7th and where we are right now. That's a one-week trading range, and uh, that pattern comes in right around 48, which, you know, <laughs> anything below 48, you're wrong. So you can trade a stock for uh, under 2%. That's the, the main thing that, uh, you know, we're watching. Now, last night, uh, on Sunday night, we had a really interesting, beautiful Gartley pattern. I happened to be chatting with someone from the U.K., and you'll notice here, I wanted to bring this up here, uh, last night here, Sunday night, you know, we were sitting right at the 78% level uh, in the uh, crude oil, just acting really, be really, really beautiful. And at that time, I happened to be uh, running the AI program just to see what it was showing. And if you'll notice here, it was one of those times where it happened to be right. And uh, it had a, uh, you know, really nice rally. We got up to that 63 uh, in change level. So those are some of the things that I kept, my, you know, watching Sunday night because the rest of the markets were, were relatively weak. And so you couldn't really do too much uh, of what we're watching there. But uh, we're, we're up to some pretty strong resistance around 63.70 in the uh, – uh, the crude oil, that's, a, you know, that's basically the 61% uh, retracement of that move down between 66 uh, and change down to 60 and change. That rally back takes you to the 61% retracement up there at 63.70. You know, whether that holds or not, you know, remain to be seen. I Before Rich came on, Rich was kind enough to send this to me from Dennis Gartman. I wanted to go over 
uh, this again because it's relatively important. It's longer term stuff, but uh, Dennis Gartman watches the fear greed index and he posted, you know, uh, what happens, you know, when you get extreme greed and extreme fear. You can see from 2016, 2017, 18, 19, all four of those have brought some pretty significant uh, moves down. I don't know if it's going to get all the way down to where we were in the December 26. That December 26 low is so doggone important, folks. Uh, if we go below December 26 low, the chances of Mr. Trump getting elected will be somewhere below slim and none would be my opinion because uh, that means the economy is going to be uh, not doing very, very well. That low that we made that we talked about many, many times, it was so many numbers coming together that it was uh, extremely important. And, and since we're talking about uh, those numbers and stuff, remember one of the reasonings that we had for the market being bearish way back in May was the fact that the lagging indicator that we used, which is that banking index, you know, we had that, you notice the three drive pattern that we had there on May the 1st, that was the same thing. We're, we're making a new high in the NASDAQ, we're making a new high uh, in the S&P 500, and here is the banking index barely making an exact 61% retracement from the high in February. I mean, you have to begin to believe some of these Fibonacci numbers after a while if they keep uh, keep showing, you know, something like that. So keep an eye on it. It's going to be interesting. No matter what, we're going to be seeing some really good volatility these next few weeks, and this is what we really strive for. So. Uh, we'll take a look. Now, speaking of volatility, it wouldn't be without anything to talk about unless we talked about the old Bitcoin. And we'll get up here. I want to show you Bitcoin, folks, because uh, this is a daily chart. But the key here is if you'll see what happened to Bitcoin in the midst of some of the most bearish news on Bitcoin you could possibly imagine. John Jameson and I were chatting about it on Friday. Uh, and well, it was actually, yeah, it was Friday when we first started to move above 6,000, and then the, the news came out extremely bearish and it immediately moved $1,500 a share. So, those are some of the things that uh, we're watching that we need to pay a uh, play close attention to. <clears throat> so, uh, sorry, folks, that that sigh calling in, unfortunately. Uh, I'll see you. Shane Smolian has just uh, chimed in here to tell us that the, uh, the Fed juice is still out there. So pay attention. The Fed can come in here at any time and you could get a four or five, six hundred point rally uh, in these stocks. And if China comes in and says something, just be careful. This this is this. Like I mentioned, starting this show, this is the time that if you've never used stops, this is the time where you better start using them, even if it's a desktop. You know, it's going to be something that would be, uh, you know, relatively uh, important. So uh, we'll see what's happening. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll watch this. Hopefully, we'll get Shane on as a, a guest here really soon. And I know uh, we chatted about it. Hopefully, we'll be able to have him. But tomorrow, we're having Al Al Larson, Doctor Al Larson from Money Tide, will be on, and he'll be chatting with us. And of course, he has that great book about. Uh, the Electrical Part of the Moon, My Electric Life, which I, I really enjoy that book very, very much. It's available on Amazon for, Amazon for a very, very small price. But if you want to know how the, what he believes, how the, the, the moon affects us, it, it's really, uh, it's very interesting. Again, it makes such good sense. And uh, Al has a double PhD, one in electrical engineering and the other in con computer science. So he's a pretty smart dude. Okay, let's uh, talk a little. Oh, my goodness, it's almost time for Mr. Rogers to take a break here. Um, the other one that, remember remember last week we, we talked about the importance of that transportation index because it was such a perfect head and shoulders pattern, uh, stopping exactly at the 78% level, the right shoulder being left and the left shoulder, the time is perfect. That's the definition of a head and shoulders pattern, folks. Uh, that's an interesting one to do. Let's, let's uh, get to talk about the bonds. I believe we're getting ready to take a flying Walinda to the downside in the bonds. I'm looking at that 149.20. That would be the 78% level uh, in the bonds if we get up there. And we'll take a look at that as interesting. And another one that's getting ready to really come apart, uh, in my opinion, is the high-grade bond market. And uh, 
This has been buoyed by uh, uh, high uh, oil prices, and uh, this is, could really be a nasty one. So 877 <clears throat> I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back. <clears throat> and I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about risk control here, folks. These markets are very, very volatile now, mainly because of the news that's coming out and the fact that we have something as an outlier event. We've not had one of these trade wars before. And but this is a game that's been going on for many years with China. If you've ever traveled there, and I've been there 22 times over the past uh, 14 years, and I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> they, a lot of things happen over there that are different than here. You know, they don't, uh, if someone does something wrong, they don't bother about a trial. They just put them in jail. So uh, it's a lot different. And there's a big sign there. When you go into China, you sell drugs, you die. You know, they have the death penalty there, you know, non-negotiable. That that puts a puts a, a screeching halt to drugs. Another thing that's going on here in Tucson, Arizona, folks, we are really in the midst of a, a crisis here. We've hit well over 1,200 people from South America, Honduras, uh, Guatemala and uh, El Salvador have come into Tucson 
they've taken over the uh, gospel mission. They had to put up two large tents to take care of the people. These are not Mexican people, folks. These people are, they, they, this is not, these are not nice people. Um, they're very angry because they don't get everything free like they'd have, and they get enough free. They get free meals and food, but they want money too. But it's a problem here in Tucson. We've not had this before. So there is a crisis out there. At least there is in Tucson, and I'm only 72 miles from the border. So I don't know what's going on, but it must be something big because they've uh, they've basically uh, taken over the, the, the gospel mission, and um, that's a great, great people there, but they're just overwhelmed. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, folks, uh, I will. I will want to mention to you that um, the one trade that I'm really liking today. It's probably going to be uh, scare the heck out of you, but that's a Treasury bonds at that 149.20. That's a uh, really beautiful uh, ABCD pattern on the Gartley uh, structure uh, up there on the hourly chart, and uh, yeah, we'll see if it's going to be any good. Now I don't know if it's going to uh, you know happen or not, but you know it's something that you know going to pay attention to. So let's keep an eye on it.